Technology is one of the fast-growing pieces of commodities today, and laptop computer is one of them. We cannot deny the computing power of this computer, how they ease our daily lives, may it be in office, entertainment or businesses. In a single click of a button, it can perform various tasks tirelessly, making our life easy and giving us more time for other things. But as time passed, components of our beloved laptop will start to fail, that will lead us to some options, to buy a completely new laptop, or to get that specific part repaired. These are the most common parts to fail throughout its lifespan, it could be its battery, hard disk, keyboard or screen. But luckily today, I'm here to teach you how to replace your own laptop screen, in the easiest way I can. From tips to extracting your laptop screen, to finding what is the exact screen for it, to where it can be bought, and finally to restore everything we dismantled. Warning, follow these steps at your own risk. On this guide, I'm using an old Sony laptop model, PCG31311W. To begin with, we must divide the repair into two parts. One is to diagnose the screen, and the second part is to repair the screen. First part the diagnosis, here I will teach to you the three basic tips for manual diagnostics. Number 1. Try powering it on, to check the display for physical damage such as cracks, black dots, discoloration, lines and many more. Luckily, I can tell mine that the laptop is still working. Sadly, the screen is broken. Number 2. However, what happen if your laptop screen display nothing but the LED indicators are fine? Just press the power button when any of these green, blue, or white light, along with the orange LED light will lit. You should hear the fan will run normally. Wait for a couple of minutes and listen for a login sound, or any sound that you can hear, either a ding or a dang indicates your laptop is fine. 3. However, what happen if your laptop screen display nothing and no sounds, but the LED indicators are fine? Before you press the power button, look for a TV with HDMI or VGA input. You can also borrow your computer's desktop monitor. Plug the cable from the TV or monitor to your laptop's VGA or HDMI output. Note: In this procedure you need a HDMI or VGA cable. And when using a TV as your display instead of desktop monitor, you must change the TV source right after the cable was plugged. Then turn your laptop on. For Windows 7 or lower OS, you need to press the Windows key plus letter P on the keyboard, right after you switched it on. If still nothing happens, your laptop problem is outside the scope of our video for today. Now you know how to diagnose your laptop screen manually. Let us proceed to second part on how to repair your screen and handle it correctly. We have 6 to 7 steps for this process. Note that laptop manufacturers do not use adhesive to stick together their parts. It only consists of overlapping plastic locks and screws. So be gentle, avoid using excessive force to open something up, and be patient. Now let's begin. First is to remove the hidden screws in the frame under those tiny rubbers. Note, I'm using an old laptop. In some newer models, there are no rubbers, or even screws so just go on directly to step 2. Also, set aside the screws you take for safekeeping. A magnet will help them stick together. Second step is to pry the edge of the frame. You can use any prying tools you want, or even an old plastic card can do the trick. Here I'm using a used SIM card's frame.
This third step is only necessary if you have overlapping frames just like this one. On most modern laptops step 2 is enough to remove the screen. I will just rush this step so that I can free the frame and access the screen faster. Fourth step is to take the frame cover out and remove the screws that holding the screen. When the screws are out, carefully flip the screen face down and disconnect the flex cable behind it. Note, some older model laptops have power inverters and Wi-Fi antennas inside their frames, just disconnect any wirings out carefully and set aside for safety. The fifth step. Now that we have fully removed the screen, it's time to take some note on what part number and models to look. We only need two to three information the screen size that we need to google later the screen pins that we need to count to be sure and last is the screen part number in case the seller will ask you about it this is optional though for the screen size just google your laptop's model and add a word specification at the end google will show you certain results of your laptop specs including its screen size and take note of that now let us count how many pins does our screen has Note that there are only two common types of pins. A 30 pins and a 40 pins screen. There is however, a 50 pins, but it is only available on gaming laptops, which is not common. Also it is rarely available to the market. To count the pins, just count the flex terminal's teeth. If you counted 30 to 32 teeth, that is equals to 30 pins. And 40 to 42 teeth for 40 pins. Now that's all we need about the pins. And finally, you can get the part number at the back of the screen, our sixth step is where to buy this screen. I order mine to my longtime supplier. However, if my exact screen is not available to them, I just go to any online app. But on using those apps, you need to be very vigilant before placing your order. Make sure that the seller is legit and you got the exact parts. In addition, sometimes a legit seller will ask for your screen part number so they can make sure that you are not just guessing the parts you want to buy. Seventh step is when you got the screen you ordered. We must check it out as soon it arrived. As online apps has only one to two weeks of warranty to return any not working items. The screen comes with a protective film and it's up to you if you want to leave it alone. Let's put the screen front side down and put the flex cable back and reinforce the terminal with tapes. Here I'm using polyamide film, an anti-static electrical tape. But you can use any tapes that don't conduct electricity. Don't use electrical tapes either, as it produces sticky slimes through time. A masking tape will do great. Then gently put the screen to its place. And power on your laptop to check your screen if it's working. Now that we have a working screen, it's time to put everything back together. 
by reversing the process of how we dismantled it. But before we put everything back let's double check if our screen is still working, because sometimes the flex may detached on restoration process. Now we are sure that everything is okay. Let's continue with the remaining parts. Before returning the rubber feet, I used to add them a little adhesives to strengthen their adhesion, because this rubber won't stick like before when you return them. Here I'm using T8000 adhesive, or any contact cements will do. Don't use super glues if you don't want to mess the screws inside. Besides super glues don't work with rubbers. Now everything is fixed. Enjoy additional 3 to 4 more years bond with your beloved laptop. If you like this video hit a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you and have a nice day.